Welcome to another video on Keyclock Identity and Access Management System. In this video, I am talking about how to integrate an Angular application with Keyclock. Let's get started. Now I am in the Keyclock admin console. First of all, I am going to create a new client for this integration. I visit the clients page, create a new client, provide the client ID as Angular client. Click save and now I am in the client configurations page. Here I keep the access type as public. Public clients does not have a client secret. Since our client application is an Angular application running on user's browser, if this is a confidential client, anyone can get the client secret by inspecting the JavaScript and HTML content. I enable the implicit flow and disable the direct access grant type. I set the redirect URL to localhost 4200. This is the default address of the Angular application. Here I again add localhost 4200 as the web origin. This is used for cross origin resource sharing purpose. If you do not put the correct domain name of the client, Authentication will not be happening properly. If you want to enable Pixie flow, you can do it from the advanced settings. From here, for this example, I am not enabling that. Client changes are done and I can save the client. Now I am on to my Angular application. This is already developed and Git URL is available in the description area. Here I am going to explain only the important sections of the code. For this integration, I am using two npm packages. They are Keyclock Angular and Keyclock JS npm packages. I have put the link in the description area. Let's visit to the package.json file. Keyclock Angular and Keyclock JS plugins were explicitly added. Rest of the dependencies are automatically installed when you create a new Angular application. Now I am moving to the app module file. Here I have added some important changes. I have declared the initialize keyclock factory function. In the keyclock.init function, two JSON objects are provided for the client configuration. Config object contains the URL of the keyclock server. Init options object contains two parameters as onload and flow. I have set the value login required for onload. Because of this value, only logged in users can access this Angular application. If you would use check SSO value, any user can access the Angular application without being authenticated. So in this mode, an authentication will be performed silently by the application and if the user is valid, a token will be generated, otherwise authentication will be ignored. I have set the flow as standard. The standard flow will use authorization code flow. Since this is a demonstration, authorization code flow is fine. But in production environments, you need to use authorization code flow with Pixie flow in order to increase the security. Here you can see, in order to make sure Keyclock is initialized when the application is bootstrapped, I need to add an app initializer provider to the app module. This provider will call the initialize keyclock factory function and will set up the keyclock service so that it can be used in this application. This is all about the configurations. Now I am going to run this application. I start the Angular application in dev mode using the ng-serve command. I visit the default address of the Angular application which is localhost. 4200. You can see I was redirected to the Keyclock login page. Here I provide the credentials of a valid user. You can see now I was again redirected to the application successfully. If you make any HTTP request using the HTTP client provided by Angular, Keyclock access token will be added to each request as a bearer token by default. So this is what I want to talk in this video. If you have any question, please put them in the comment area. I will do my best to answer them. 
see you in the next video thank you very much